There you go. All right, off we go to our slides. Share. And you can see, Shigeko, this uh, first slide is going to be for you. So you asked uh, if uh, the, the golden rule was in the uh, Old Testament. So, I mean, here, here's what I found. I, I'm sure you could find uh, other answers as well. Um, but uh, this says uh, uh, that not, not specifically, but there is um, a reference in uh, this part of the Old Testament um, that you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against your countrymen, love your fellow as yourself. Now, it specifies uh, countrymen, uh, which is interesting. Um, uh, but later on, uh, Eiko and I took a course in the Old Testament, and uh, later on, uh, th there is a, a specific moment when the Old Testament becomes universal. And I think it's the story of Ruth, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, 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 this statement is more for countrymen versus countrymen. Um, now, fellow, maybe it could be somebody besides a countryman. But later on um, in the, the discussions of uh, the Torah, the Talmudic scholars, um, uh, Halil um, uh, elaborated uh, on that and specifically uh, uh, said, uh, uh, what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. All right. So, um, Shigeko, uh, uh, if, if you can find anything else on, on this, uh, let us know. You're our, our biblical scholar. All right. So, um, back to the uh, Sikhs. Some people say six. Um, and apparently in India, it's pronounced six. But uh, uh, that has other connotations in our society. So Sikhs. But if I if I lapse and go back and forth, uh, I understand that. So um, we we showed last time how the six had really been uh, persecuted um, by the Mughals, and uh, their leaders were uh, uh, executed. Two of of their uh, first. I lost the sound. What's sound that? Sound is not coming through, John. Uh oh. But we could hear you say "oh," so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 It just clicked out for a couple of sentences. Uh, oh. You ended. You. The last thing we heard was that the six were persecuted in India, as we talked about last time. Oh. Okay. Well. All, all right. I, I don't know what the problem is. I didn't get an indication. So. Okay. Uh. uh We'll uh, go back here. All right, uh, sorry for uh, the interruption. You can see the slides, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, so uh, the six uh, make a big comeback and they capture uh, the Red Fort uh, in Delhi in 1783. And that's, that's a, a a milestone victory, military victory for them. Uh, but they have been militarizing. Uh, we, we know that their uh, 10th guru uh, uh, started a, a heavy duty military wing and they have become very uh, proficient uh, in fighting. The Red Fort belonged to the Mughals. I'm sorry, yeah, that fort belonged to the Mughals, absolutely. And they had a, a warrior code called the, the Khalsa that the 10th guru had set up, if you'll remember. So they're, they're successful. And by uh, 1805, there's a, a, a Sikh empire, a Sikh empire by 1805. So we're talking now about a, a, a new part of Sikh history. They're, they're, they've gone from a, a reform a religious movement to a, to a full-blown um, uh, empire. Now, um, uh, the Pashtuns are sitting up here watching all this, right? 
Um, and you'll see at this particular moment, Peshawar, which is uh, uh, the, the Pashtun summer palace on this map that already uh, is in the uh, uh, sick reign of um, uh, realm of uh, hegemony. Um, the uh, man who did all this is uh, there, George Washington, if you will, Ranjit Singh. Uh, and he's got many, many, many titles as he ac accumulated and had more one military victory uh, after the other. But I'm going to focus on this one. The I Lord... lost the sound again. Yeah, me too. What's going on, Aiko? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Just came back in. Christ, what's the matter? Yeah. Uh, Aiko, maybe I should get even closer to the router. I'm, I, I'm in the room next to the router. So I'm gonna make a switch here. Um, if I were a TV station, there'd be something on the screening about technical difficulty. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh boy, now we got feedback from your... Uh, Uh, all right, so I'm going to stand here in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, John, that's not a good solution. No, 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 no. Well, we'll, we'll uh, uh, I'm going to move uh, in Iko's room, but she's going to have to stop the feedback first. So I'm going to focus on the, he's the Lord of the Five Rivers. So, huh, Five Rivers, what's that? So this is uh, uh, the Punjab. And what does the Punjab have to do with the Indus River? It's the source. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's the source, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and the, uh, the Punjab is these five rivers come together and uh, make the source for the, one of the, the four major rivers of the first river civilizations. Uh, the, the, the first organizing principle um, rivers being uh, uh, what contributed to the uh, the start of civilization. If it happens again, I'll just uh, turn my thing off and sit there with you. Okay. Uh, we've got an emergency plan. Uh, and so um, uh, this is an, a, a pretty important valley and this is the Punjab. So now uh, we're learning about what's right next to um, uh, Pashtunistan, if you will. What's right next to Pashtunistan is the Punjab and Baluchistan. They'll, they'll be coming into play later. But the, uh, the, the Easter in the East and the South uh, has always been the important directions for the Pashtuns. And they're certainly important uh, today. Um, and that's where American troops had problems on the eastern and southern uh, border of, of Afghanistan. Um, and then the, remember, uh, Kandahar is down here, um, not on this map, um, but uh, Kandahar was the, the, the first capital uh, of. Gone we again. lost you. Okay. We're implementing the. Come back here. We're implementing the. I'll turn myself off. All right. Then we don't have to sit in here. Yeah, and you can hear me because I'm sitting right next to you. Of course, now they'll have to tell you if the sound goes because I can still hear you. They're good at telling. They're good at telling me. We worked out that part. For uh, viewers uh, unused to this interaction between speaker and, and audience, it, it's a very free-flowing uh, communication, as you can tell. Okay, so um, the uh, that's that's important. Uh, Kandahar is um, uh, over here. Uh, they 
There was a strategic move of Kandahar. We'll talk about this a little bit later. As the capital of Pashtunistan, they, uh, there was, they, as uh, Pashtuns do, the, the tribes and sub-tribes started fighting, and one of them took a, a Tajik um, a ally, uh, and the, Kabul is a mixed city of uh, Pashtuns and Tajiks. Um, and the other thing was the, the strategic location on the Khyber Pass. So it wasn't just convenience to move to Kabul for a Tajik ally. It was also to, to uh, be able to control the Khyber Pass, which leads down the, to Peshawar. So the Durrani um, uh, uh, dynasty uh, that was controlling the uh, empire, uh, they made uh, Peshawar the, the, the summer uh, uh, capital, the palace. Um, and, and so uh, with that background, you see now there's going to be a lot of interaction between the six and the, the, the Pashtuns. Um, and that'll play out in interesting ways. Here's a, a, a more a geographical uh, map of uh, the Punjab um, and uh, the, the rivers uh, coming together. Uh, Multan's an important city. There's going to be a big battle here. But remember, here's Amritsar. Amritsar. This is where the third guru was from, and this is where the Golden Temple is. Uh, so this is the heart of, of uh, the Sikh religion, and then uh, the heart um, of the uh, empire. Um, the, the, so the empire started in 1799 uh, when the Maharaja Ranjit uh, Singh uh, captured uh, Lahore. And it ends 50 years later uh, when they are finally defeated by the Brits. So uh, the Brits are going to be an important player on the south and eastern uh, border of uh, Pashtunistan. So that's why I'm going into the, 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 this background a lot, because that uh, southeast border it was so crucial in America's failure to uh, bring, bring any kind of state, uh, a democratic state, to Afghanistan. So um, uh, uh, Ranjit didn't start from scratch. He... he uh, uh, it was in a long line of a prominent uh, uh, Lahore family, uh, and they're all named Singh. So if you know anybody named Singh, um, uh, there's a, 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 a possibility they have a, a sick uh, background. Um, spoiler alert, uh, the Brits are going to conquer the Six, but the Six will collaborate with the Brits and assist the Brits. And when the Brits leave in 1947, they, they're going to switch their uh, allegiance to the Hindus. Now, you remember the religious uh, movement started as a reform of Hinduism. That was the initial thrust. They were against the caste system. They were for more equal treatment of, of women. Um, and uh, but but having gone through a, a, a couple of phases of history, they wind, they're going to wind up back uh, uh, with uh, the, the movement is going to wind back with the re religion they were originally um, rebelling against. So um, that's, that's going to uh, revert. Um, by 1818, uh, uh, the Durrani Empire had uh, uh, broken up um, and, uh, into four uh, sub-tribes, and uh, that made it easier for the Sikh to move into their area, and they took Peshawar in, in um, uh, 1823. Just to review who's controlled the Peshawar, the, the Mughals, Babar, uh, uh, coming down from, of all places, Kabul. He had originally uh, started off in the Farhana uh, Valley. 
uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Tajik uh, community there, but his mother was a uh, Mongol. Um, and uh, he'd come down and, and taken Peshawar as uh, ancillary uh, to his uh, becoming the ruler of Kabul. He ruled Kabul for five to 10 years before he headed south to uh, uh, capture India and start the Mughal dynasty. Um, the Marathas, we've talked about them. They were the, the hin, uh, Hindu rebels uh, that, that came up and uh, uh, fought the Mughals and, and uh, triggered a, 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 a plea from the um, uh, Mughal um, Muslim uh, emirs uh, for help from, of all places, Saudi Arabia, from the Wahhabists, right? So that was in uh, around 1750. Uh, and it was in response to the, uh, the Maratha uh, uh, threat to uh, not only northern uh, India, but also to Pashtunistan. Uh, and then finally, the Durrani's uh, 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 achieved power in uh, Kandahar and made uh, Peshawar their, their summer palace, as we said before. But now the Sikhs are there, but the Brits are going to take it in 1845. Uh, Why? Because they're interested in the Khyber Pass. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Um, so, uh, Back to the Pashtuns in 1837, there's an emir, right? There's no longer uh, a Pashtun king, um, uh, but there's an emir of Kabul, and he's organized a, a sufficient uh, military force to try to uh, retake Peshawar. But the first step to do that is to uh, take uh, the Sikh fort of Jamrud. Um, and they failed. And that was that pretty much ended their influence uh, in, in the, 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 the government, at least, of Peshawar. Peshawar today is a Pashtun town. Why? Because of all the refugees uh, that have fled uh, the, the violence and the fighting uh, that has been going on since the 1970s in, in Afghanistan. Uh, so it's a Pashtun town now. It's just not uh, uh, ruled by Pashtuns. It's ruled by uh, 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 the uh, uh, Punjabis um, uh, from uh, uh, Pakistan, from Islamabad. So that was that was the uh, end of that. And so Ranjit Singh, um, uh, a year after uh, defeating the Pashtuns, uh, uh, definitively 1838. But he's got uh, other plans besides heading uh, uh, to his west uh, border. Um, uh, and we'll get to those. Here he is. He's uh, originally um, uh, the Sikh religion was monogamous, but uh, they, uh, there were some exceptions. <laughs> um, uh, and this was his uh, uh, palace in Lahore, the stronghold of uh, 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 the uh, governing stronghold of uh, the sex. Um, the uh, spiritual center is uh, Amritsar. Uh, and uh, he here's himself uh, being shaded. Um, and uh, here's the, the golden temple, which is was uh, built, uh, I think, by the, the third guru and improved all along the lines by, by every uh, guru. And so uh, uh, Ranjit um, uh, renovated it. Uh, and uh, there it is. It's, uh, it figures uh, in uh, Punjabi history uh, repeatedly. Um, and uh, this is uh, Ranjit uh, uh, listening to uh, recitations um, uh, from uh, uh, the, their holy uh, book, the Sikh holy book. Um, and by the way, uh, when the, uh, the Sikhs uh, emigrated to America, and I'll, I'll give you the reason for that in a little bit, um, they had to bring some of their holy books with them. Um, 
and uh, given th their reverence for for their uh, sacred texts, they got had to get a separate airline ticket for each book, uh, and the book had to have its own seat, which I found really interesting. Uh, As dictated by the airlines or the six? By the six. <laughs> um, and uh, so this is Ranjit. Uh, uh, this uh, is one of uh, uh, the prominent women. Um, and I'm going to emphasize this. The status of women is much higher in the, the Sikh culture than it is in the Pashtun culture, as, as we've seen with uh, uh, what the Taliban makes women do. And the Taliban is, is Pashtun, um, uh, uh, 32 out of the 33 cabinet members are Pashtun. Um, and so uh, women, uh, and this is one of his uh, uh, wives, um, and she was famous in her own right. And Amritsar, uh, his uh, political home was Lahore, uh, but his, um, uh, the center of uh, uh, the Sikh religion is Amritsar, and uh, Ranjet is uh, remembered there. Um, he uh, uh, was tolerant of, of uh, Europeans, and he uh, had some in, in his uh, army. Um, and his peak empire uh, uh, looked like this in 1839. And here's Kashmir. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about Kashmir and Jammu. Um, if there's a, a hot spot for possible uh, nuclear conflict, um, it, it, it's uh, Kashmir is certainly uh, uh, one of them. Uh, the the border uh, around them and and is is another possibility. So there's this tension now uh, between India and Pakistan, uh, both with nuclear uh, weapons. And so um, I, I feel like I, I, I should talk a little bit more about uh, Kashmir, even though it's uh, far away from the, the Push, uh, Pashtuns. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, Kashmir had been Hindu, um, but a tolerant kind of, of Hindu um, uh, that uh, attracted many craftsmen and traders because of their, their tolerance and, and the security uh, in, in Kashmir. Um, and Jammu was uh, a, an early uh, center. Um, so you hear the phrase Jammu and Kashmir uh, together. And that's because they're, they're both in the Kaj Kashmir Valley. So yeah, Jammu and, and Kashmir, you could even combine it in, into one word. They're not, they're not separate, uh, even though there's two different words. So uh, the technical uh, border is uh, 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 between them is here. The K is Kashmir, the J is uh, Jammu, but they're all in, in this uh, uh, valley uh, together. Um, Last week, somebody asked uh, about Ladakh. Irene. Irene, that was you. Yep, that was me. Uh, so, um, and I responded then, well, huh, we just had some friends who went to Ladakh. Yep. So I've expanded a little bit on Ladakh uh, for Irene and for my own curiosity. Um, and it's quite interesting. So, uh, 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 please in, indulge me and Irene and Iko on this. Um, so where's Ladakh? Right here. Here's Jammu and, and Kashmir. Um, Ladakh is uh, uh, far away from any prominent valley. So the greens are the valleys. Uh, um, and uh, Ladakh is more mountainous, but they, they got a valley. Um, and uh, I just, uh, how, where does Ladakh uh, come into the, the, the picture? 
um, the uh, uh, Ranjit had uh, uh, grabbed uh, not only uh, Kashmir and, and Jammu, he'd also grabbed uh, Ladakh. And he died in uh, 1839, um, and things kind of started to fall apart. One of his uh, Hindu administrators who had allied with them from the, the Dagra family, um, betrayed the, uh, the Sikhs, and they, he passed intelligence to the British. Um, and uh, this uh, portrait captures a sort of uh, wiliness. Uh, and so he collaborates with the British, but remember, so will the Sikhs, so will the Sikhs. Um, so uh, the Sikhs, uh, uh, based on that uh, intelligence, uh, 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 they uh, started losing uh, to, to the British. Um, and at that time, Ladakh had simply been folded in uh, with, with Kashmir. Now, what happened in, in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh is, is going to be a template for uh, British uh, control. To, to come in to play one side uh, off of uh, uh, the other and to, to use their superior technology to eventually take control. So uh, one of the uh, 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 collaborators, a Hindu co a collaborator in the uh, Kashmir, um, uh, he uh, uh, later on, and we're talking now about 1889, so we've skipped ahead, and uh, uh, the uh, Kashmir Hindus are cooperating with the British. Uh, but the, Brit the British find out that this guy is dealing with the Russians, um, and there's a, a plot. So now we're in the thick of the great game, right? Uh, the, uh, the, this is the first time I've me mentioned Russia in a while. So Russia is going to be a force coming down uh, from the north, um, and the Pashtuns are going to uh, have to deal with Russia. And big time uh, in our lifetime, uh, starting in uh, 1979, when Russia uh, invades Afghanistan which is a complicated story, which we'll get to. But here we are in 1889, and the Russians have convinced this uh, Hindu to uh, double cross uh, the Brits, and uh, he's going to murder his own brothers and the British resident. But he's found out, and you'd think he'd be executed, but there's something called the Treaty of Amritsar, uh, and the Brits uh, uh, honor it, uh, even though this guy is awful. Uh, um, and he's allowed to come back in, but his brother is put on a ruling council with an extra British agent. I just thought this is interesting, and I, 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 I give more detail because it foreshadows the influence of the Russians and what they're going to be doing and, and mucking around in Afghanistan. And their invasion in 1979 that we all uh, lived through uh, started the, the craziness that has uh, ended up with uh, us failing, like they did, uh, to turn uh, Afghanistan into a, a nation of our liking. Um, so uh, Russia, I'm going to make connections, which I like to do, but how did Russia get down to plotting with somebody in Kashmir? And you'll remember when we did Russian history, the, a big turning point was in 1812 in the Russian mentality. And I think it's, I think it's important. Uh, why? Because today the Russian mentality uh, Putin is uh, uh, amassing troops on the Ukrainian border again and, and a push south. Um, so uh, south to the, to the sea um, uh, has always been, uh, since this moment, 
something that the Russians thought was possible. Before, they didn't have that much confidence. Yeah, they had Peter the Great, they had Catherine uh, the, the Great, uh, but uh, they had not uh, ventured internationally uh, to any great degree. But burning their own capital, burning Moscow so that Napoleon couldn't have any sucker in the middle of winter um, was a turning point for the Russian mentality. So a strategic retreat, um, which I think is just uh, uh, interesting. And uh, Napoleon's uh, forces, uh, he only got about uh, seven or eight percent of them back to France, lost um, uh, 92 percent of his troops, uh, cat catastrophic. And uh, as if that weren't enough, in 1814, Alexander I faked out uh, Napoleon uh, and uh, uh, left Napoleon ill-prepared for, for Waterloo. Uh, that's a long story. You remember Osama bin Laden was captured in a place called Abbottabad. What? Abbottabad. Well, that sounds Indo-European, that sounds European. Um, and this is James Abbott in 1840, who was part of that uh, newfound Russian confidence pushing south. Uh, and they pushed south because they were tired of the Turks taking white slaves from their Southern uh, border. And you'll remember uh, uh, James Abbott was, was part of uh, uh, that uh, 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 move to control the Turks on their southern uh, border. He was Russian? Uh, James Abbott was um, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. How does that fit in? Mm -hmm. um, I think he he was he was involved. I'll I'll, I'll I'll double check that. But that was that was in the original uh, first time through Russia. I uh, can't, can't pull that up right away. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, in 1909, I want to take a look at uh, the, the Punjab. Now you look at all of India uh, and uh, Britain's hegemony. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, here, here's how the Punjab fits in. It's, it, it, uh, it's small, uh, but it, it's key. It, it's uh, especially for the history of the Pashtuns uh, and, and Afghanistan. And if you see the outline of the Punjab, you can kind of make out a butterfly, okay? So that's gonna be my uh, uh, reference point. But here's a, a, a close up of that map. Uh, here's uh, uh, Kashmir. Um, in the Punjab, uh, uh, right below it, and the the northwest uh, frontier provinces. So we're getting to the northwest frontier uh, provinces through the back door here, talking about uh, the Sikhs, and then they are, they go into Kashmir, and Kashmir is uh, borders, uh, uh, and there's a lot of Pashtuns. Uh, in, in the Northwest uh, frontier border. So Kashmir is not, uh, uh, y y there's a connection there. There's a, a, a connection. Um, and uh, uh, remember India is uh, partitioned. Um, and I wanna get a little bit into uh, that. I wanna finish the story of, of, of the Sikhs before we go back and pick up uh, the Pashtuns after the fall of, of Peshawar. So let me just finish the, the story of the Sikhs because it's, it, it, it's really uh, fascinating. Uh, so uh, uh, in, this is 1946 uh, before uh, uh, partition. And this is uh, 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 the Punjab and here's Jammu and, and Kashmir and, and, and Ladakh. Uh, uh, you see, is just totally folded in, um, Irene, and considered uh, part of uh, uh, Jammu and, and Kashmir. Uh, with partition, 
um, uh, Kashmir, and I'm just going to use one word to describe uh, uh, this whole territory. Uh, uh, the uh, Hindu uh, Raj in, in Kashmir uh, had to decide. He had a mixed population of uh, Sikhs, Hindus, and Muslims. And was he going to uh, uh, join Pakistan or was he going to join India? And he dithered for five years. And that's part of the problem today. Um, there, there wasn't a clean uh, decision uh, right away. Uh, uh, Gilgit uh, went to Pakistan, so that wasn't uh, uh, an issue. Um, but uh, he dithered until 1952. Now we're in our, our lifetime, right, that we can uh, remember. Um, and he dithered uh, until then and finally opted to go um, with India. So uh, India is, is uh, 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 purple, um, Pakistan is, is uh, uh, green. But you'll notice uh, that here there's a Azad part of Kashmir and a part of the, the uh, unofficial settlement uh, uh, there's a, a, a line of uh, contact between uh, uh, Indian Kashmir and Pakistan Kashmir. And th this could be, uh, this could spark a nuclear response at some point. Let's hope not, but, but there you are. And again, Ladakh is, is just kind of folded in there. Uh, they are uh, blessedly uh, far away from this and in a world of their own. Um, so why are they in a world of their own? Because they're Tibetan Buddhists. They're, they're Buddhists. Uh, and this is, this is uh, fascinating how uh, this is Tibet, uh, Tibet's over here and, and, and you got Nepal and um, and they uh, are uh, have always been uh, uh, part of uh, the Buddhist uh, tradition, but there's been some interesting exceptions, and I'm going to get to that. So uh, you'll see that Ladakh is in uh, a high uh, altitude, um, and that's one reason they can uh, li live a little detached from uh, the rest of uh, India and, and Pakistan and what they're, they're going through. Um, and uh, you'll see this is Srinagar, uh, uh, main city in uh, Kashmir. Amritsar, uh, right here. Uh, keep that in mind. What's uh, K2? That's uh, the second highest mountain oh, okay. in the world. Thank you for asking. Second highest mountain in the world right here. Um, and this is the capital of uh, uh, Ladakh, Leh. In this nice little valley. Most of the uh, Ladakh is the mountains and glaciers, but you got this valley and another little valley over there. Uh, and uh, evidence of uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhism um, uh, all around. And these uh, uh, are our friends who uh, uh, recently visited Lei on a uh, medical mission. Um, uh, I'll start with uh, Janie, who uh, was uh, in the same dormitory uh, as Aiko and Shigeko, <laughs> uh, the same dor dormitory where I met Aiko because she was my boss. I worked in the kitchen. Uh, and Aiko uh, and Janie have rem remained uh, close uh, uh, friends. Her husband, uh, Phil, who's a political consultant, knows a lot about history, and uh, I'm uh, good friends with him. And this is his high school buddy, um, uh, Ed, who is a, 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 a pediatric uh, dentist, uh, but he also loves to travel. And we traveled with him to uh, Burma, uh, the six of us. Um, and uh, he, he uh, 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 went, went to uh, uh, different parts, uh, parts of uh, Burma where the Rohingya were. Uh, he was, he's an intrepid uh, uh, traveler. 
and also a, a race car driver <laughs> as a hobby. Interesting guy. So he um, volunteered and took uh, uh, Phil and Janie with them to do a dental project uh, to help uh, uh, with the Ladakh uh, kids uh, develop good dental practice. And they also uh, polished their teeth with uh, this, this new fluoride uh, treatment. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that. But I want to talk about the other religions that were there uh, on and off. Uh, and one of them, you won't believe this, uh, was Shia. Uh, so there were a lot of Sufi missionaries who came through all areas. And uh, uh, one of them was a, a, a Shia scholar who visited uh, Kashmir and Baltistan. Baltistan is just north of, of Kashmir, just north, uh, you remember on the map. And so he spread the Shia religion in Kashmir. And uh, the majority of Muslims in Baltistan are Shia. So that's just fascinating. Um, uh, Ladakh uh, stayed. Uh, 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 Tibetan Buddhist, as it is to this day, um, under this dynasty, which is still uh, in, in power. Uh, and, and this dynasty, uh, not exactly an empire, but their kingdom spread as far as Nepal. Um, so they were relatively uh, successful. Uh, they fought against uh, uh, the Mughals, allying with Bhutan. Um, and the, uh, all this was uh, 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 the, the conflict between uh, Muslims and Buddhists was settled by a strategic uh, marriage of a Ladakh uh, princess. Um, the Mughals finally with, uh, withdrew from the area after being paid off by the Dalai Lama. So uh, they probably uh, welcomed a fig leaf to uh, uh, get out of there. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, what you, the map uh, currently, um, and you see this uh, dotted uh, line. Uh, this is the, the line of separation. It's not an official border. Um, it, it's what's evolved unofficially um, after that five-year delay when the um, uh, Hindu Raj couldn't make up his mind. And you'll see this part of Jammu and Kashmir is under Pakistani control, as is Gilgit and Baltistan, which everybody agrees belongs to Pakistan. Again, what has this got to do with the Pashtuns? Here's Afghanistan. So you remember on that, that upper Northeast uh, part of Afghanistan, there's this funny um, uh, protuberance uh, heading towards China. Yes, Afghanistan borders China right here. Um, and, and so uh, this, all this uh, starts to fit in. I like the, these maps. I like studying Ladakh uh, uh, because it's helped me make connections to other uh, parts of, of history. Um, which you can kind of remember in isolation, but when they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and a, a, a certain piece of history falls in, it, it's really helpful. And then the, the Northwest Frontier Province that we'll be talking about, uh, very heavily Pashtun. Um, uh, 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 it's called uh, uh, now a province in Pakistan called uh, Khyber. Pakhtunkhwa, which is the, uh, another, uh, uh, Pakhtun was another name for Pashtuns. Um, and so uh, you see how that, that all uh, uh, fits in. Um, a very interesting map. Um, so our friends uh, were there. They had uh, some time when they weren't doing their medical uh, project and they, they took a tour and got the the history of Ladakh and how Ladakh fought off the, the, the Mughals, uh, finally uh, uh, paid off by the Dalai Lama. But while they were there, there was this parade 
And it's what? Read the sign there. I'll give you a second. Read the sign. So, Shia. Uh, and you'll remember the big uh, 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 conflict between the Sunni and the Shia was on succession, with the Sunnis wanting uh, to have some kind of elected uh, head uh, of uh, uh, Muslims, with the, the Shia saying, no, it should be um, a uh, descendant of Muhammad himself. And you'll remember Hussein was uh, the, the son of Muhammad's daughter, Fatima, and uh, her cousin, uh, uh, Ali. Um, and, every, and everybody, all the Shia went to war for Ali, with Ali. And, and uh, 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 his son is, is Hussein, who was killed in the Battle of Karbala. Karbala. And you'll remember when we talked about um, the start of Shiism, uh, that uh, uh, Karbala uh, uh, was, it is a, a point of um, a, a holy place, of, a, a point of pilgrimage. Um, and and we, we all learned about Karbala uh, with the U.S. occupation. It's a shame we learn history through the uh, U.S. occupations, but that's the way it is. Uh, and so what happens in a Shia uh, uh, celebration of Ashura? Ashura is the holiday where the, the Shias uh, self-punish. Uh, uh, um, uh, whip themselves. Um, they, they believe in, in this, this martyrdom, martyrdom. They believe in, in suffering. And if Hussein suffered, they should suffer uh, once a year on Ashwa, and they should beat themselves to the point of drawing blood. Uh, the, uh, the, the blood is, is a signal of your virtue uh, and your, your, your uh, piety. Um, and uh, they got these uh, bloody photos of Ashura. They were uh, uh, positioned themselves so they could see what's going on. These people that are doing the parade do not live in Ladakh. They come down from Baltistan. Remember the, 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 the uh, uh, Pakistani province uh, just to the north. Um, and I guess the, going back and forth across the border, uh, that, that far up in the Himalayas, uh, people don't care as much. Um, but they come down uh, from uh, uh, the Pakistani Baltistan uh, to celebrate uh, Ashura in a parade of lay uh, in a Buddhist Ladakh. Um, but... Uh, uh, Equal Opportunity Day, uh, the Buddhists also had their parade, uh, a, a Tibetan Buddhist parade, uh, a Tibetan uh, prayer wheel in evidence. Uh, they had a, um, a, a, a Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist uh, a, a play. Um, uh, and part of the parade, uh, the cultural uh, Silk Road, um, the, uh, and then uh, Apollo, uh, this is where Apollo came from. We've seen uh, Prince Charles play polo when all throughout his life. Well, this is, this is where the British learned uh, to play polo. Um, and Iko and I were struck by, by the, the garb, I mean, and, and the faces. There's just no question that uh, these people, uh, the ancestors of these people, headed north to the Bering Straits and came down to the New World, because uh, th this this is a, a Hopi uh, Kachina, uh, uh, very similar, um, and th this woman, uh, uh, with all her turquoise in particular, uh, uh, could be Navajo. Um, uh, so the, uh, the, the genetic continuity is unmistakable. 
Um, and so this is what they were uh, there for during uh, the day, um, applying uh, uh, fluoride um, uh, to young teeth uh, to keep them from decaying. And that was a huge problem when we were on the Navajo reservation, um, what was a, a tooth decay from uh, kids giving uh, a Coca-Cola at the uh, trading post. Uh, and we did this and uh, we were there beginning in 1969 and we tried to uh, get the word out, but tooth decay was a terrible problem then. Um, I just throw out this map because it, it, it just uh, helps me, uh, 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 the maps pull history together. So here, here's uh, Ladakh, here's Kashmir, and just going, uh, clockwise around this map just pulls a lot of things together for me. Here's the Fergana uh, uh, Valley where Babur came from with his uh, uh, Turkic uh, father in the line of Tamerlane and his Mongolian mother in the line of Genghis Khan. Uh, and uh, just moving on up around here, uh, you, you see here's Kashkar. Uh, we, we hear about that as a, a stop on the, the, the Silk Road. Um, and here's a, a Rumchi. Who lives in a Rumchi? The Uyghurs. And boy, are we, we hearing a lot about the Uyghurs now. So uh, all this uh, is a this is a, a piece right in the middle of a, of a jigsaw puzzle that kind of pulls together uh, a, a, a lot of things. And in our travels, uh, uh, we've gotten this far uh, 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 to the west in China, Dunhuang. And what's in Dunhuang? Famous uh, uh, caves with uh, uh, Buddhist art and drawings. And there's a giant Buddha in Dunhuang. Um, uh, 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 Xinghe, Lake Xinghe, uh, uh, Qinghe, right? Uh, the uh, province in, in China, um, uh, Gansu, greater area. And uh, when uh, our oldest son, Jeremy, took us there, he, he took us to, to elevated parts of Gansu uh, because over the 5,000 feet, uh, the Han don't like to go. So, uh, they're, they're segregated, uh, uh, not uh, uh, laterally, but uh, altitudinally. So the Tibetans uh, take over the land up above 5,000 feet because they know what to do with it. They, they herd um, and uh, uh, they're left alone in Gansu uh, province. And there were, uh, 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 Jeremy took us to a Tibetan uh, monastery um, and uh, that, that was the high point of the trip. But all this is tied in to uh, Ladakh and Kashmir. And then uh, 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 this is what? Right here, this is Afghanistan, uh, that, that, that strange limb that comes out uh, from, from the, uh, the, uh, the upper right, the northeast uh, corner, and has a small uh, border uh, uh, with, with China. Um, all right. So how are we doing on time here? Time check. Uh, I be, I better, better start winding down here. So I got to look for a place to uh, stop. Uh, so Ladakh, Kabul, uh, here's that uh, uh, arm of Afghanistan that reaches to the border of China. Uh, northeast from uh, Kabul. Um, and here's the uh, uh, line of control. Uh, again, the, uh, uh, the, the red line is the historical realm of uh, United Ka uh, Kashmir. Um, and you'll see the, the, the border uh, uh, between India and, and China, where they have a lot of fighting between India and China. It's not that far from, from uh, Ladakh. So Ladakh is uh, 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 surrounded by, bracketed by disputed uh, uh, land. Um, 
And this is the uh, Karakoram Highway. Where is that coming from? It's coming from Kashkar in China. So China, uh, like the Russians, is uh, uh, plotting its move to the south. And they've got a, a port in uh, Baluchistan uh, now. So Pakistan uh, has gone from being our uh, uh, best buddy in the region to, to uh, uh, China's best buddy. And here's that highway um, in uh, 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 comparison to the line of uh, control, the dotted uh, line, the unofficial line where there's, there's so much conflict and so many uh, terrorist groups on either side of that line. Question, John, on, yeah. on this map, what are the light blue or white areas supposed to designate? I'm going to guess they're mountainous. Yeah, I don't mountainous. Know. Okay. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know for sure, but okay. at the top of each one, there's a triangle with an altitude. So yeah, I think those are... Okay. The Good. white areas are mountainous. Yeah. Thank you. All right, the musicians of that uh, area, the musicians where we, we visited, uh, uh, traveling in Lijiang uh, in the, on the uh, uh, eastern side of the Himalayas. The western side get the better looking musicians. Uh, mm -hmm. And here's uh, uh, polo as it's being played uh, now up in that area. And here you'll see polo being played in the man who would be king, which could have been shot right in all these areas that we've been talking about in Kashmir. Uh, the Rudyard Kipling uh, short story, highly recommended. All right, so I think uh, uh, before we get to uh, the Sikhs finally succumbing to the uh, English, the British, um, uh, th that'll be a good place to stop. Um, uh, and I can do that. And I certainly have time today for questions. I didn't last week, but I can take questions today. We can dally. I just wanna point out that we are getting back to the Pashtuns soon. I think all this is relevant. I found many different reasons to uh, uh, point to uh, uh, things Pashtun uh, as, as we talk about uh, the Sikhs and the Kashmir and, and, and the Brits. Um, but uh, uh, I, I'm setting up uh, uh, in my mind uh, a visual model of what's going on uh, with the, the Pashtuns. Um, uh, I, one dimension is ethnic, uh, which uh, is becoming increasingly familiar to us with the Pashtun uh, tribe and, and warlords and, and subunits are. One, one uh, unit is, uh, uh, one dimension is religion. Uh, and we've seen how different religions and different interpretations of religions uh, uh, come slashing through that area. Um, we see the national uh, 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 move, so the, the move from Kandahar to Kabul. Um, uh, hey, if you, if you want to uh, 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 be a power, you've got to have a nation. Uh, and so the, the, uh, and, and the, the geopolitical importance of the Khyber Pass, so they gave up their purity in Kandahar and moved to Kabul and, and uh, tried to ally with uh, the, the Tajiks. So you have that, that national dimension. Uh, so that's complicated enough, but now you get the fourth dimension, which is the international uh, influence and the international uh, interpretations of religion, like Wahhabism, like uh, the Diobandi, um, uh, and, and so you have those four things coming together and I'm, I'm working on a way to present it visually. So as we go forward, when I return, uh, uh, next week, um, we'll, we'll have a, um, 
a scorecard. <laughs> uh, as, as they say, when I go into, you go into a baseball game, you can't enjoy the game without a scorecard, right? And they try to sell you a program with the scorecard. And I, uh, as all this stuff, we've assembled so much inf information about the Pashtuns, and now it's getting interesting. Now we've got all four of those uh, uh, dimensions in play, and I, I, I'm, wanna, I'm gonna work out a way for us to visualize that. I, I, uh, Irene? Yeah. Why did you ask about Ladakh? I've been fascinated by Ladakh for decades, but never did anything about it really. I wanted to go trekking in the Hindu Kush in Ladakh. And I can't, I'm trying to remember the name of, the, there's an English woman, Noreen somebody or other, who wrote a book and I think it was called, um, my uh, something like wisdom of the ages my 17 years in Ladakh she was she was a, a one of those people a contemporary of ours uh who but who got fascinated by Ladakh and she would spend every um English uh, winter I guess in Ladakh something like that and and she was she wrote a book and published it and it had to do with the effect of commercialization on Ladakis who had 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 a, a lifestyle in which um, you know they worked four months of the year to make sure they had enough to eat for the rest of the year and they spent the rest of the year socializing and doing music and playing games with each other and doing all this stuff and then oil and white bread and coca-cola started coming in. Anyway, I, I heard her speak about it and I was just really quite interested in that transition that um, we've all, <laughs> all of us have been through long ago, our civilizations, but it was happening contemporaneously in Ladakh. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, I am fascinated by the Himalaya in general. And this, um, view that you've given us today, John, of all these other um, areas, not just the but in the You're middle of up. this whole complicated area where I go, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it well, probably wasn't all that important. But no, no, we, we got the drift. We, yeah. we, uh, we got yeah. the drift. Um, yeah. Have you ever heard of Greg Mortensen? He wrote the book, Three Cups of Tea. You yes. Know, he he cl supposedly climbed K2. K2. And right. then he got, and so I looked it up. He got, he claims he was taken care of by these villagers. It sounds like, uh, right. you know, he got, he some parts he wasn't telling the truth, apparently. I don't yes. know if you follow yes. that. But anyway, I, it's interesting to look at the map. I've got it on my phone and I'm going to bring it up to the camera in a minute. But Corfe Village is where he claimed these people took care of him after he came down from uh, K2. Right. Corfe Village isn't, well, it's not that far from Ladakh. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that where Corfe Village is? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Ladakh? Yep, yep. And sure. So I'm wondering if you heard it, you know, have you read his book at all or? I read his book and I was a, uh, a supporter of his movement until I, I started, <laughs> until I started hearing that it was uh, not so good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He got kind of called out yeah. and got more full of himself than, yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm wondering if it was because, you know, you had heard about him and, and you know, Corfe Village isn't far from Ladakh, but I, yeah. you know, and I look, uh, while Johnny was talking, I was looking it up and trying to see if uh, Greg Mortensen had been to Ladakh, but um, it was hard to find. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. But, but I heard about Ladakh too, and I'm wondering, you know, that's why I was wondering if it was in, in um, association with Mortensen, because actually I went yeah, yeah. To, um, a, a book signing and, and talked to him and took pictures and all this kind of stuff. And I, I too, gave, you know, money and then. Uh. Right. <laughs> Whoa, not another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, my brain is caught up with Iko's question about James Abbott. 
So um, uh, the, the, we're going to be getting into the British uh, era, um, and th they recognized uh, that the, the Russians were heading their way, um, and they sent Abbott up to uh, uh, the, the tribal areas, and he, he dressed up uh, as a native and went um, all the way to... Um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Kiva uh, that that was that was the center of white slavery, um, and they knew that the Russians were he were headed uh, that way. So Abbott's mission, uh, as part of the great game, uh, was was try try to limit uh, the Russian influence, um, and so he was he was trying to counter. Uh, what the Russians were doing as part right. of the great yeah. game. The British. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a, I don't know how you keep all this straight. It's overwhelming. Well, I, sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering, you said you were going to tell us what happened to the six, if they're still there. And uh, I, either I missed it or. Next week. Oh, yes. that's stay tuned. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I ran. Ladakh was too tempting, Shigeko. Uh, uh -huh. And I, and well, you got to see pictures of Janie, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, Ladakh was was too tempting. Um, uh, uh, you know Janie. Irene knows Janie. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I Iko knows Janie, Irene knows Ladakh, uh, right. and I, I couldn't resist. So I didn't get to it, but uh, I, uh, it'll be pretty quick. Uh, we don't have that much to go until we get to the final uh, tragic, tragic end of uh, Sikh influence in India right. and why there are so many Sikhs in the Bay Area. Right, uh -huh. right. Huh. Next yeah. week. How's that for a cliffhanger? <laughs> Sounds <Yeah>. good. <laughs> All so, right. uh, John, I have a couple of comments after we stop recording. Okay. Let me do that. <laughs>